Well, we've just had Katie Crompton get done banned, that is, for four years for doping. And uh, she still denies it, so you can make of that of what you like. But uh, let's just have a bit of a discussion about why people do these sorts of things, you know, cheat or bend the law or whatever. And uh, why would, in women's cycling, especially where there's not as much money to be had, why would someone do this? I mean, I can understand it in men's sport because the dollars are significant, but in women's sport, not so much. So let's write an intro and let's have a bit of a talk about doping or even just breaking the law for gain and why people do it. Even if we just remove the whole doping and sporting, because that, let's just face it, that's breaking the rules or breaking the law, and these people are being punished for that, okay, in the fact that they can't compete or they have those titles taken away from them. But, you know, this sort of corruption and acting inappropriately for monetary gain is pretty, pretty common through our business. I mean, we could have, you know, someone who works at the local shire or county and we may have a land developer and he may put some money in someone's top pocket or basically give them some land if they rezone their property that they own because once they rezone it they can do high um, development more houses in that area and can make more money so just getting the shire to rezone that is adds up to dollars and these sorts of things do happen and we've seen these come up in the news where someone's done something inappropriate or a company is solely recommending another company or they have a conflict of interest and people are making money from this so i don't see a lot of difference between this sort of behavior and doping in sport because what it is is it's basically just breaking the rules Hopefully we won't get caught and we're going to get some significant gain in our profession or in our business that we're running. So that's something to consider. This is not, this is not really that unusual in the way people behave when it comes to business. Now what a lot of people don't realise, you know, when it comes to doping, it's not a matter of hey, look, um, I'm deciding I'm going to dope, so I'm gonna get myself some antibiotic steroids from some underhanded guy, and I'm going to pop a few pills, and and then I'm gonna go faster, like uh, Roger Ramjet takes his protein pill and he becomes super strong. That's not really how it works if you're going to dope in sports, because with, with any sort of corruption or where they're taking advantage of rules or the system, Usually there's a number of people involved. There's an agreement between different people and that agreement gives a net benefit to everyone involved in that piece of corruption. So if we had the example with the, the mayor or someone who works at the Shire County, he would get some benefit for allowing a piece of land to be rezoned so then the developer can make more money because he can divide it up into smaller lots and sell more houses for a similar expenditure of infrastructure. Now, when we talk about doping, we need to look at a, it holistically is the word I'm looking for, so <laughs> I was a bit stuck for the, finding that, because, you know, it needs to be part of your training regime. And what we, what we need to realize is these professional cycling team have a regime. You know, they have doctors, they have dietitians, they have, you know, um, personal trainers who design how they train, how they recover. And those drugs that could potentially be used need to be slotted into that training cycle. So what you've got to realize is that this is not one person. This is not just Katie taking a few pills. This would have been a team decision. So maybe even the sponsors even know because you know they're demanding performance from their riders. And so what we would have is we would have a basically a training schedule and a doping schedule to increase the performance of those riders in that team. And most probably you might even find that uh, a number of people in that team were on that same program. So 
when we point the finger at a single person, and this is what tends to happen in cycling, it really kind of bothers me because the a lot of people who are probably putting pressure on these these athletes really get off scot-free because you've got um, there's someone who's uh, prescribing the dosages and when they take it there's also a strategist that's probably saying take it in this cycle so it's very hard to get caught and then you've also got a personal trainer that is developing that training program around the enhancement that those drugs offer. And normally the drugs don't actually make you go faster, but they make you recover quicker so you can train harder. So that all needs to fit in. It's like a, a key and a lock. It all, it doesn't work by itself. It needs to be, they need to be put together and then you open up the lock and then you get the performance enhancements. So it's it's a very touchy subject. And I think that uh, that uh, I'm, not, um, I'm not saying that if Katie took, um, you know, illegal drugs, performance enhancing drugs, she should be punished. But uh, I think it extends more than just the athlete. And uh, I can see the incentive because a lot of people, not just in sport, but in business have the saying that uh, the end justifies the means. So as long as you get to the end, however you got there, it really doesn't matter as long as you get there. So as long as you get the results. And I mean, people have these, these personal standards themselves and also business have standards like this because you know uh, it's strange as actually she rides for trek because we know another significant doper who rode for trek as well but it um these companies must be aware of what's happening in these teams so you can make of that of what you like but it is interesting that um in women's cycling i was a bit surprised that uh, there was doping anyway guys that's where i'm going to leave it and uh, yeah, another example of people doping to cope. Catch you next vid. Cheers.